Hello, in this video we're going to be looking at something called pseudo-classes in CSS. Pseudo-classes are used to uh, specify a special state of a particular element. So, for example, the first letter in each paragraph could be a different size, um, or a link may change colour when um, it's in a different state. So, um, for example, when your mouse is or mouse cursor is hovering over a link, it may change colour or um, size or um, it might fade to a different color. So we can um, specify uh, a theme for a special state of a particular element when a when an element is in a particular state. Um, pseudo classes they're built into CSS uh, so you can't just create your own pseudo classes uh, and in this tutorial we'll be looking at some examples of those different pseudo classes. So we'll look at how to style the first letter of a paragraph or a sentence um, or the first child of a parent element, um, or how to add content before and after uh, existing content in an element. So if we have a look at, at uh, my page here, I've got the body section and it just contains a few paragraphs of text. It looks like that. Okay. Um, and then I've got my style sheet, theme.css, which is open over here on the right. So let's uh, first look at how to apply uh, a theme to say the first um, first letter of a paragraph. So this is what a pseudo class would look like. We would reference the type of element, so p for paragraph, and then a colon, and then we can be more specific about what we want to apply to um, a particular state of a paragraph um, or part of a paragraph. So what I might want to do is um, make the first letter of each paragraph uh, bigger. So I might say p colon, first letter. And you can see a few different options come up, like first letter, first line, first of type. Um, so maybe um, the first paragraph on a page or first child. Um, so that maybe the first paragraph that begin belongs to a particular div. I'm going to go with first letter to start with. And I might say font size uh, 2em. It's going to be twice as big. And it should only be one colon there, by the way. So um, it's going to be twice as big as the other letters. So if we save and refresh, there we can see the first letter of each paragraph is a bit bigger. All right. Okay. Um, now we could try uh, changing the first line as well. So we might say um, p colon first line. And what this would do is make the first line uh, have its own theme. So maybe we might want to do font weight bold. So the first line in every paragraph is bold, like that. Okay, so you can see each of the first lines there are, are bold. All right, and maybe we might want to do um, the um, first child, so the first paragraph um, that belongs to a body or is a child of the body. So if we did p first child, what that will do is apply a theme to the very first paragraph that belongs to the parent element, which is the body in this case. So we might do, uh, say, color green, which looks like that. Okay. If we had, um, you know, a, a paragraph within a particular div, uh, we had a few divs on a page, and we said um, first child, it would apply a theme to the first paragraph within the, those divs. All right, but in this case, the paragraph is just a, a child of the body. Okay, um, some other examples that we can look at. So we can do um, last child as well. Do p last child. We can do last of type as well. And we might say color blue. So this should make the very first, a very last paragraph, sorry, should make it blue. Okay, and um, a couple of other things that we could do is um, changing the content before or after existing content in an element. So let's say we wanted to, um, at the end of each paragraph, um, maybe we were cutting off the text or um, truncating the text. So we might just want to add some dots at the end. All right, so we could do P, this is a paragraph, and we could say after. And what this means is if now if we say content, we're going to add content after the existing content. So I might just add three dots. And if we go back and refresh, 
we'll see now that there are three extra dots or periods added at the end of, of each of those paragraphs. All right. If we did um, before instead, so P before content and then those three dots or whatever other content we wanted to add, we would see them at the start of each paragraph. Okay. Um, and we can see now like the, the first letter isn't um, very big because it's just a, a dot uh, instead of a letter there. So we can't really see much of the change in size. Okay, I'll just change that one to P after. Um, now, these are pseudo classes, but remember we can also apply these to existing classes um, as well. So we might have, say, you know, a particular div here. And we'll just call it like my div. All right, we might copy some text in there. All right, and I'll just indent that so it's the same as the others. All right, so we've got paragraphs outside of a div and then paragraphs inside of a div. We could um, reference that div's class name, which is called my div. So we could say dot period my div paragraph. And then we could specify a pseudo class. So we could say like um, first, first line. And first line might be um, color red. Okay, if we save and refresh, we can see um, the first line of every paragraph that is within this div here called my div or class name my div is now red. We can also see um, the first paragraph of the body is green and the first paragraph apart from the first line of um, the div with the my class my div class name is also green and that's because we've said paragraph first child color green so the first um, paragraph that or first um, child element that's a paragraph of any parent element such as the body or a div is going to be green so the one at the top is green because it's the first child in the body. So the body is its parent. And this one here is also green because it's the first child of a div. So um, a div called class name my div is its parent. So it's the first child of that. All right. Um, and then all of the other themes still apply. So first, first lines are bold. First letters are um, twice double size font and so on. Okay, so um, that's basically how you can apply um, pseudo classes to uh, your CSS code. But there is another really cool type of pseudo class and that is for links. So that is for when we can um, apply a theme to a link um, as it normally is, a link when a mouse is hovering over it or after it's already been clicked or the page uh, has been visited. So we'll look at that in the next tutorial, how to style links, and we'll be using pseudo classes to specify how um, different states or how a link in different states should look. So when it's um, just normal or when a mouse is hovering over it or when it's already been clicked. Um, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.